Hi everybody, welcome back. So let's say you're someone who's interested in investing in the share market and you're also interested in renewable energy and you're thinking, how can I combine these two together? How can I invest in renewable energy companies on the Australian Stock Exchange? Well, in this video, I'm going to run through five examples and this is not a comprehensive list, but this is just five examples of companies that you can buy shares in through the Australian Stock Exchange and these will give you exposure to the renewable energy market. So when I initially looked in the Australian Stock Exchange, I found about 13 companies that work in the area of renewable energy and they're pretty much 100% renewable energy. And of these companies, it's kind of a broad brush. You've got some big billion dollar companies and quite a long tail of million dollar companies, should we say. So in the interest of time, I decided to narrow it down to just five companies. Now the first two companies to look at are Mercury and Meridian and these companies are broadly quite similar. They're both billion dollar companies. They both have very high PE ratios, meaning People have very high expectations of future earnings on them. If you want to learn more about PE ratios, you can sign up to my new course on PE ratios running for nine nine no. Just Google it, you'll be fine. PE ratios, generally, if it's somewhere between 15 and 20, that's pretty good. That means the market hasn't really overpriced it. If it's higher than 15 and 20, it's very expensive, or it's considered expensive. And if it's lower than 15 and 20, it's considered a little bit cheaper. Or it might be about to fall apart altogether, so be careful of how you read PE ratios. Dividend yield, they both do pay out dividends and I would say quite reasonable rates. I mean, they're not bank rates and they're not mining rates, but they're reasonable rates. You don't get any franking credits and I believe that's because these companies are mainly based in New Zealand and I don't think the Australian government would give you tax credits on money that's made in New Zealand. In terms of power generation, they are all 100% renewable energy with geothermal, hydro and wind. No solar, I don't know if that's because solar is quite challenging in New Zealand, but there is no solar exposure to these companies. And that's not a typo at the bottom where both of them are 52% owned by the New Zealand government. So you're actually buying companies that are pretty much government owned but are listed on the Australian and New Zealand Stock Exchange, I believe. Now, when we move off the billion dollar companies, we then come down to Infratrill, Tilt, Infigen, New Energy, and Gen X. Now, I've grayed out Infratrill and Infigen, and the reason for that is Infratrill seems to be basically an investment company, described often quite like Brookfield, where they're basically collecting money and then buying things that are in different types of businesses. So Infratrill actually has ownership in data centers and couple of renewable energy projects and I think even an airport. So I thought I'd avoid them because you're not purely investing in renewable energy and Infotrol actually has ownership of Tilt, which is a company that you can just buy directly. So you can buy shares in a company that's bought shares in Tilt or you can just buy shares in Tilt. And the reason I've left Infogen off as well is it's a great company, but it's just had a takeover bid, which the general news media is saying will probably go through. So that company is probably going to be delisted quite soon. There's nothing wrong with that. It just means it'll go from being public to being private and owned by, I think it was a Spanish company. So looking at the last three companies I wanted to run through, Tilt, New Energy and Gen X, you're looking at basically a billion dollar company, a couple of hundred million dollar company and a sub hundred million dollar company. All of them are 100% renewable energy and it varies between wind, solar, and one of them does storage. Gen X does do storage, so batteries. When you look at Tilt, even though it's a billion dollar company, 85% of it is owned by Mercury, which was the company we talked about at the start, and 65% of it is owned by Infotril, which is that investment company I talked about hopefully a little bit earlier. So what we're saying is 85% of the shares are not really being freely traded on the public exchange. And you can see that when you go and look at market depth on this company. So if I type in TLT, and I'm on Comsec right here, I type in TLT, and you can see the market depth there's 63 buyers and one seller. Course of sales, this was on Friday. There was five transactions altogether. 1.30, 2 p.m., a couple of 3 p.m. and one just as the market was closing at 4.10 p.m. 63 buyers against one seller is saying it's trying to go into the housing market. So unfortunately, you're then really left when you're looking at these smaller companies with New Energy and Gen X. Now, New Energy is a company that primarily seems to raise money and buy uh, utility scaled solar energy operations. And I'll throw up a couple of their screenshots and I believe only 20% of their stuff is being done in Australia. Most of their solar power plants are in the USA. The company seems to be going through a bit of strife with trying to unload a few positions they had in older solar power plants. I think it's a company that's going through a bit of a season, should we say. Now, that being said, their operating business, the actual solar power plants they're running, do make a profit. Like they, do are, they are making money 
It's just they seem to be struggling with a few write-offs, which I don't fully understand, and maybe you do and you can have a look into it. But it seems like they're struggling with managing the perception of the value of their assets rather than actually making money. So if you're willing to ride the wave of dealing with the uncertainty and the value of their assets, then you're fine. So the last one is Gen X, which is about a hundred million dollar company based in Australia, 100% renewable energy, solar, wind, hydro, and energy storage. They want to do all of those. But the reality is right now, they only actually have one operating site, which is a solar power plant, which is making about $10 million a year. And they're looking to build a pipeline. So I'll throw up this screenshot here, which shows their corporate portfolio. So that top line item, Kidston Stage 1, is the only actual power plant that's making money that they actually have. Everything else is either in development, so they've got nothing going, or they're under construction. So that's just something to be aware of, that you're buying a company that has great promise and potential and I'm not going to sit here and tell you I can assess that and tell you it's great but what you're really buying is this promise of future income coming out of here whereas the reality is it's only making 10 million dollars a year from that one solar project so what you're really buying if you buy shares here is do they have the competency do they have the ability to manage large capital scale projects to bring these things online and then if you go towards the right, the revenue model, do you think there's going to be enough demand for these things? Like, do you think there'll be another Energy Australia or someone else who will say, yes, we'll buy the electricity? Because remember, these small companies that we talked about, unlike the first couple of billion dollar companies, these smaller companies, all they can do is build a plant and then sell the plant to a retailer who will then actually sell it to everyday Australians or people. So it's not end to end. So you have to assume that they're hopefully going to be able to sell the electricity because it's one thing to make electricity and you have to actually sell it to people that will actually then pay for it. So that's just something to be considering when you're looking at someone like a Gen X. Now the other companies that came up on the list when I was looking through and when you saw on the market were these companies, 1414 Redflow, Carnegie Clean Energy. They're not very large so I'd kind of be cautious about how you go about it in terms of market depth. Is there a lot of people buying and selling these shares? You know, you can buy maybe $5,000 of shares, but if it's if no one else wants those shares down the track, you're going to be hanging on to those $5,000 of shares for a while. And I don't think any of these are paying any dividends. Like some of the solar companies we saw before weren't paying dividends, so how can you expect these guys to? So just be mindful of that when you're looking at some of these smaller companies. Now bringing it back to the whole idea of ETFs versus shares. So I've done quite a lot of videos on ETFs, and I'm not against the whole idea of buying ETFs. I just think if you're going to buy ETFs, especially and you want to try and target renewable energy, you need to start with a broad based or a fundamental understanding of what are the actual renewable energy companies out there that I can invest in. That's what I've tried to do here in the Australian Stock Exchange, these are the companies. Now when you want to look at your ETFs, look to see if these companies are actually in those ETFs. Then you'll be right. But I'll guarantee there'll probably be some other companies that you may or may not like also in those ETFs. So you just got to be careful and mindful of that. In the next video, I will try and do that piece of work for you where I'll look at some of these ETFs and see what's available out there and do these companies actually carry these companies in there. If you enjoy the video, guys, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye for now.